let them let them look at <laughs> our distraction. Yes. She's snuffling. Oh. Hey. Oh, it says this right video there? is unavailable. What she said. Yeah, that's because that's not our live link. What do I say to the people who are waiting there? I just delete it. So it's I'm putting it on the Facebook. I just post. Oh, I, I should have put a post. I did. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Um, we got I'm one. We got on one Facebook. viewer. <laughs> I'm putting it on Facebook right now. Okay. And I am emailing our guest right now. Riveting content. We have a couple people <laughs> that found us. Um, I'm so confused. So if you go to our channel to live, there should be Oh no. Um, I also posted it on Facebook. I just was on last one I see is we will be going live with the YouTube channel. Hold on, sorry. <laughs> it's swirling. Okay. I can't find my own live stream. There you go. Do you see it? Yes. That's good. So, and you're going to email that to... Yes, Vera has it. Vera. Okay. Sorry for the changes. Just a slight delay. Okay. And I will have you call Vera. Excellent. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Someone said, that's me, and it's her just chomping into the dog toy. Said what? That's me. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Good morning. Good Did morning. You an email that has Hello, it's Kyla. Did you get the email with the video link so you can see us live? Oh. Just says what it is. I, it's fine. I can make a horizontal. I don't no, know that it it's lets fine. you. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Here, I'll, cool. I'll, 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 I'll go ahead and do an intro. Good morning, everybody. We're um, getting organized here. Sorry for the switch. Um, but we are live for the Rocky Mountain Goat Shop Hop, and Kyla has Vera on the phone. She's in Western Canada, which is where these guys, part of the range of where they live. And I'm going to share an armature with you today and all the supplies. Not a super complicated project in terms of color. Um, they're white, but there are some details that are going to distinguish this this project from sheep, goats, deer, etc. So we will we will get into that for sure. You doing okay over there, Kyla? I, I think I am gonna switch it to landscape. People enjoy your trousers. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Uh, we'll see. I wouldn't. People I said it's small. Oh, but what happens if you do that? I don't know if they like. Yeah, I don't know if it. I don't. Well. Let's right. make sure we get right up on some of the fiber. <laughs> We're just gonna have to get close up. So let's uh -huh. start with the armature, and then we'll go looking for the um, the supplies that we need. Um, I made sure, the armature a little bit larger scale 
than, <laughs> let's say, you know, the sheep, goat, donkey um, scale that we work with because they do have a lot of fur and you want the ability to get a good amount of detail going on this. So I actually used um, armature length similar to the deer and the donkey, changed the proportions, but an actual Rocky Mountain goat is only about a meter high. So they would be, um, if this were a donkey, they would be a lot, a lot smaller than a donkey. But I think this size is gonna give us good potential for the coat and the details. Um, and then, pretty simple, I did do a double wire on the legs to be able to have the cloven hooves, which are really important on this project. The other thing that is pretty important for this project is the, the rear, um, the toes on the back of the leg, kind of like a moose has. And because it's so imperative to their um, environment and their survival, I would include them. And so going a little bigger lets, lets us do that as well. So I have um, my wires ready to go and I will make the armature. This guy stands about six inches tall um, from the floor to the top of the withers. So my wire lengths are 24 and 26 inches for you know, the main wires, and then a 14 and a 12 for the additional leg support wires. And I'm gonna tell you a little secret about cutting wires. I always do an extra inch because it's just sometimes we get our wires off. Um, sometimes in the wire measurements that I give, there is wiggle room to cut wire at the end, but you, because of the way we make the armature from the nose fold you know, to the shoulders and then the legs coming down, you always can cut a little bit of wire off and that's gonna save you a lot of frustration. This is my question, just to yes. clarify. 24 and 26. 24 and 26 inch. Is that with feet. the extra inch or would No, you, that's like would you do 25? For my nose, so I just when I measure I just So you'd actually I just cut twenty five down a little bit. So you'd cut twenty five and twenty seven. Yeah. Technically. And these somewhere, are all 14 gauge wires. Somewhere in there, yes, 14 gauge wires. So we're gonna start with the 24 inch, which is going to be the head, neck, and um, front legs. And the first thing I wanna do is twist about four and a half inches because the head is going to be two inches and the neck is going to be 2.5. Okay, we find the center of our second wire. I always go on from the front and then I twist each side inward and that puts the front leg down in the right position. So two times. And see, look already, I've got, well, just a little scoot and I got it evened out. And your remaining wire length here is about six inches, just to let you know where you should be with it. So far you've twisted, Vera asked how far you bent to get to the shoulders, that first. Four and a half inches. Four and a half inches And down. all of this will be sketched out and um, put on the Facebook page okay. like we have for the other shop hops. So, you, I mean, definitely like observe and take notes right now, but we will um, include the information again. Then we want the torso at about five inches from the front leg to the end of the twist. So 
So we have that. Then the 14 inch wire, the slightly longer wire will be for the front legs because we want a one inch, um, I guess it's like a little more than one usually, um, withers bump here and then twist the leg wires together. And I didn't measure exactly how far, but just leave yourself an opening until we get through the other wire bends. Um, then we'll know exactly where to end the twist. And I always try to twist in the direction that I will be wrapping. And then same thing on the hind legs. I'm gonna take the 12 inch wire, make a mountain, match it up and twist it together. So in my learning about the mountain goat, <laughs> they're actually not goats, which is really interesting. They are members of the same family um, as deer and cattle. Uh, let me see if I wrote it down. Not that we need all the scientific names. Um, so Capra is the goat, which I guess is where Capricorn comes from. Bovidae is antelopes, gazelles, and cattle. All right, and then we have some bends in our legs. I am going to do a shoulder blade, a forward shoulder blade on this because they do have, part of their characteristic is a very deep shoulder. So from withers to the point of the shoulder is quite, um, quite dramatic. And I also do a little kind of butt bump because they also have a nice round, rounded butt. And for that reason, I'm doing this butt bump. I'm not gonna do a matching um, butt bone bend on the back. So a little bit different armature for us, but the forward bend for the shoulder blade is about, is three quarters of an inch. So that's gotta come forward to create that depth between the, um, the withers and the point of the shoulder. And then the backwards bend for the elbow is one inch. And then the distance to the ankle is three inches. Like that. And you wanna keep, um, keep about a half an inch for your little hooves. And then on the hind legs, we're gonna come forward. Each, each bend I'm doing at uh, one and three quarters inches. So forward to the stifle at one and three quarters, back to the hock at one and three quarters, and then down to the ankle or pastern at one and three quarters. So just three equal, three equal bends. And then I'm gonna trim all my toes to about a half an inch. So this, you know, that might be that little extra distance that I put in my wire. And it's just, it's nice to have it. Let me see before I trim. Any questions? Not, not in the chat. Okay. So pretty simple armature. 
you can, lately I've been using a uh, 26 gauge to go down my legs, 26 gauge um, cloth covered wire to go down my legs and make my little toe points. Um, you don't even have to go over the toes necessarily, especially if you're using swax or, um, or cold wax medium, which unfortunately we are having trouble getting that right now in case you're looking. Um, so my little, um, drawing will be, um, posted later on Facebook and along with all of the supplies, but a few, just a few notes. I feel like my, my off camera armature was a little, a little better. Um, to take a look online, it was hard to find skeletons specific to the Rocky Mountain goat. They want to just throw you a goat skeleton, but they are a little different. They're, they have, they're narrow and their legs are a little bit longer and, um, they, you'll see when, it, when you start building with wool, you want to go deep in the, in the shoulder, in the neck. Some of them have pretty good little belly going, but they do have quite a kind of a tall tapering look to them, which helps them stick on the side of, side of the mountain. And then, of course, the beard, and it kind of looks like they have pants on because they're shaggy about halfway down their leg and then, then just short haired. So um, when you go to make it, just some things to keep in mind. And you will see as you're researching, um, you know, how they look. And their face, their face is a little different than a goat's. They're, they're, it's, it's narrow, it's long, the eyes are small and set high. Um, not quite as sculpted as most goats that, that I've seen. And then the horns will be in 22 gauge wire, just like we do goats and reindeer um, and those those types of projects and they're pretty simple they just they just kind of angle backwards without a ton of curve and they're not as chunky as something like a ram um, because they actually don't butt heads they they stab each other <laughs> instead so they're a little little stabby buggers Okay, I'm gonna get a cart and we're going to pick out our materials. We'll just mm -hmm. take the long way, Talbot. Oh no, that's <laughs> so. <laughs> so I would like to start. Beer uh, said Beer said they use their horns to ward the eagles off because the eagles try to get the baby. Yeah, and the mountain lions and wolves and bears, I think, were their main main predators. I like to start with the wire, um, you know, kind of work work the supplies for the project from the inside out. I think it helps to understand what wool to use when and why. We are making our project with 14 gauge wire, plenty for this, plenty for this size. And then if you don't have 22 gauge, you can pick any of the any of the colors of 22 gauge but that will be your horns and perhaps the tail. Their tails are quite short, so you might just make it out of wool. And then a 26 gauge wire to go down the legs and make the little points of the, of the cloven hoof would be good. All your you know, usual needle felting tools, the things that we use like the face ace and the um, Zuli tool needles, of course, will for sure come in handy. So have those on hand. And you can use, um, if you have cold wax medium, you can use cold wax medium. If not, you can get some swax for um, making your little hooves nice and pointy. And um, and get that wire, get that wool to stick on that narrow wire. All right, we're gonna move over to, they're mainly white. So, except for obviously the hooves and the horns, you'll wanna have some grays on, on hand. 
but we're going to get off-white chunky core for sure. And I have not made a complete Rocky Mountain Goat, so I don't know exactly how four ounces will be plenty. I imagine they're going to weigh about two and a half to three ounces total. And then I like um, either light gray, carob, or dark gray for things like horns and feet. You can pick, you don't need all of these. <laughs> you can take a look at some, some images online and see where you want to go in terms of, you know, how light or dark you want for the, for the horns. I do like having some Serafina white. This is your, this is your go between the off-white chunky core and things like the fur. We're going to, we're going to put some fur in the cart. We can also put some mohair. I think that'll help get that little bit more of a wiry texture. So for the coat, oh, again, we have a lot of options. Um, we have platinum mohair and white mohair. They are a little kind of stained, like they're not pure white. So even though maybe when they're super clean, they're white as the snow, I would get a little bit of a, of a platinum color in there. Then the other options are alpaca. So we have fawn and white. And I would stick to the, um, stick to the warm tones. They're not really gray. I don't, I've never seen them sort of grayed out. So you want to stick with those like platinum blonde colors. And then as a, a, a way to shingle between the fur at, or these other long staple fibers for the coat and the Serafina white, we want something like white Paulworth or um, water chestnut, a a textured but long wool that's going to help us layer our our fur and mohair and alpaca on. So I'm near the white pole work, so I'm grabbing that one. And then we're going to move down here to the fur. You have anything, Carla? Uh, no, we just need to make sure you don't turn away from the. I know. I thought about it camera. a little too late. <laughs> Ideally, we'd have a lavalier mic, but I'm not sure yes. if we could do that. Yes. Okay, I'm going to grab platinum. We are out of Arctic, and um, but we have this other, if we get Arctic, I would totally use that. Okay, so we have the mohair, the alpaca, and we can pick, um, we have white Tessa. We have, we have white mulberry, don't we? Yep. Yep. Thank you. We have white tussa. We have white mulberry. So basically you're going to be making your own Arctic fur. If you're, if you're ordering today for this project, you could also add um, honey tussa. So a good way to go could be to use the white mulberry and the honey tussa um, to get a variation between the dirtier blonde spots and the pure, pure white spots. But I'm going to put all of that in the cart. Um, so let's see. Oh, yeah, I think that's, I think that's everything. Can you think of anything else? Kyla? Or does Vera have I mean, any questions? Yeah, we'll give her a second. Yeah. Um, would you use any kind of lock for the shaggy look or? Yeah, definitely. We could take a look at the locks. We have a lot of Got beautiful good ones. locks right now. Talbot just washed a Wensleydale Gotland cross. That is gorgeous. It's not, I don't believe it's listed yet, um, but we do have a lot of beautiful locks at the moment. It's, it's a little harder not harder, it's a different look because you have the cut end 
And then you have the pointy end, especially I think some of the ones we're listing are lamb locks. So they have that really delicate pointy end. And depending on how realistic you want to be, you might have yes. to um, like comb it out or pull it out. But if you want to go for stylized, you could leave all of the, the curl in there. There, I imagine their coats are fairly coarse. It looks very straight when when I look at pictures, but let's go see what locks are in stock right now. And then we'll come back around and look She's at- She's gonna take a look at the locks to see if there's any, so they don't really have curl curl. Okay, so the new sheep curls are a Wensleydale cross. So they are, um, they are longer and more defined than they used to be. So these are an option. We also have a Cotswold lamb, which is nice. A little bit of a, a larger curl to it, like a, a broader wave in it. But those would work well as well. Anything else you could think of? Uh, bottom there, okay. maybe some gray tan. Yeah, I don't think if they're really white. Hmm. Like I don't think. We oh, we got those. Which ones? Oh, Wensley Dale lamb. Okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh! And then we have straight um, Wensley Dale lamb, which I can open these up when we get um, when we get over to the counter. And the ones that will be listed are the Wensley Dale Gotland cross, which are I just had my hands on them. They're beautiful. Yeah. I think. Yeah, it's going to be too dark. <clears throat> um, snow hair is another option, but I, I think Serafina White is really going to do the trick. But snow hair is another coat option. All right, let's see. Which, uh, should I be on this one? Yeah, right here. Is that what you meant? Yeah. Okay. I just, I just happened to see a question. We do not have any extra long locks at the moment, yes. The, the ones that I'm talking about, the Wensley Dale Gotland that will be listed were, I'm gonna say in the seven, for lamb locks very long, mm. the six to eight inch range, but we don't have anything super long. It's hard to get those and um, like if, usually when you can buy those, it's in smaller quantities and we like to have things that everybody can have. <laughs> we don't like to put 12 of something out anymore because in the old days we did. All right, let's see. We're gonna start with off-white chunky core. We're gonna wrap our armature, make our make our shapes, get them all tacked on. Then we have some Serafina white for face details. If you wanted to add a little bit of you know pink or tan, you could add. Um, let me let me pull up a picture just so I. Rocky Mountain boot. Okay. Yeah, they're just, <laughs> they're pretty much white. Um, one option would be to use a little light gray oats or Gen Gen tan, especially underneath when you wrap the face and then pull it out with a um, reverse needle. That's something I've been having a lot of fun with lately. So let me get some Gen Gen Tan and some oats to put in the potential pile. That's what those would be for. Then, oh, we have a gray or grays for feet and horns. Definitely do not need all of this, but you can choose how you want to go with that. I'll get 12 wire in a second. 
Okay, now for the pelt, for the coat, I would take the approach of shingling. A true fur technique get, get, gets too puffy. Um, you might use fur just a little bit on the legs and on the beard. But other than that, I would do some shingling. So let's look at all our fiber and decide especially considering that there's no um, Arctic right now. Okay. I would, if I were gonna just sit down and make this right now, I would probably do alpaca, mohair, um, mulberry silk, and tussa silk for my white, and then pull in some either platinum fur makes it really easy or you can mix together the fawn alpaca and the platinum mohair with some tussa silk to get a fur um, kind of platinum color you decide you pick i also have this um, tussa silk but i think with the honey tussa it has just it has a, such a pleasing color and the mulberry silk is nice and shiny and these as well, if you get them on and you want to wet it and scrunch it a little bit, it'll give it a little more sort of texture and realism. So that's your fur colors. And then either white Polworth or water chestnut to um, as that layer inside of your shingle to help hold everything, hold everything together. Other option being locks. Let's take a look at the locks. Just might as well look at locks anyway and show you guys what white locks we have on hand right now. This is the Cotswold lamb. Did you have a question, Kyla? Um, she said that she does have some Arctic fur on hand. Good. So, yeah, she's so very individual, you know, what we would say is well-defined about four to five inches long and tiny little, tiny little ends. This is also, oh, this is the light sheep curls, which is a Wensleydale uh, border luster cross, I believe you. So we will take a look at these. Nice and bouncy. Also about four or five inches. Maybe not quite as white as the, um, as the Cotswold. A little more sort of natural creamy colors in there. And then we have the Wensleydale Lamb. This should be almost, um, this is probably what you'll want. It's nice and like white, silvery white. Very soft. Um, more fine. This is more fine. There's a bad spot to go through that bag. Um, it's moving on ours. She's saying the video is frozen, but I... Yeah. I, I don't know if anybody else has noticed. I, I, this is like... It's a little... It's interesting to try to describe differences. This is very soft. And I feel like it, you might, it might be translating in terms of like how it looks, but um, yeah, so. And then um, lastly, should have been firstly, we have our wires. So 14 gauge, 22 and 26, and either Swax or cold wax medium. I'm gonna get these back in their rightful bags. What does Vera have to say? What does she think? What do you have to say? Her video was frozen for a bit. Oh, okay. <laughs> she can play it back too. Um, did you have any other questions or thoughts?
Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> Did she have anything? She said the locks could end up looking like a bad perm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um... Okay, I'll see what else I what else did I learn. Uh, so they're about a meter tall. They can jump three meters. They are nanny, Billy, and kids are how they're referred to, male, female, and babies. They have about a ten year lifespan. They're somewhat aggressive, as adorable as they are. Um, and I wrote down about they don't ram, but they stab, which I. <laughs> just think is funny and we already covered their predators um, but yeah there's lots of good you know you guys can you guys can YouTube it <laughs> just as easily as I did but there's a lot of fun videos out there and I do like learning about the animal that I'm making before I make it I feel like it helps kind of tie you into what your goals are with the project and what makes it different from another mm -hmm. project or similar which is a great way to tackle something that there's not a step-by-step -step tutorial for. You know, think of things you've made already. That's how I start all my armatures, is I look at things I've made already to get an idea mm -hmm. of the links that I need. Um, which tutorial would you recommend watching as far as just the sequence of wrapping and shapes and everything to right. adapt to this project? Probably the goat. Just the goat. Yeah, it's, it is, we did go a little bigger um, and she's going to want to add those little back, um, those little back feet toes <laughs> back. So maybe cut a piece of 22 gauge wire, wrap, wrap the end and swax it and then, or the, or the, the 26. So cut a piece of 26, maybe an inch and a half long, wrap it with whatever hook color you're using turn it around and wrap it so that you get that nice wrapped end and then put some swax on it. Then when you wrap your leg, you're gonna put that into it. I'm trying to think if we did that, do the reindeer have that? Oh, that's an advanced tutorial. I'm trying to think if there's any of the free tutorials that have that back toe. Um, maybe not. But I usually build the toe onto a wire or two yeah, wires and then when I wrap the leg I put those in the right place so that they're sticking mm -hmm. out um, you know at the at the ankle at the back of the ankle mm -hmm. um, and then Mary Marin did say she has an old container of cold wax that has hardened up Aww. is there any way to just soften it someone suggested maybe the microwave could just add water I, right? would, add I water. would try to if it has like a hard film on top I would try to get that off get the top off first and then if that doesn't work maybe it's good underneath it and then if that doesn't work add water put the lid on tightly put it in a bag because if it hardened with the lid on it must mean that maybe the lid's not sealing properly or there's a crack or something mm -hmm. um and then yeah see not sure what it would do in the microwave but mm -hmm. yeah i would add water and let it sit because it is water-based but it is also meant to be fairly permanent when it dries, so yeah. it might not soften up. But that's a bummer. <laughs> Kyla is multitasking. Show, show it's, it's Kyla. <laughs> She's talking on the phone. She's feeding um, treats and mm -hmm. monitoring the chat. <laughs> it's all good. And she's grateful as her sticker said. <laughs> um, Sarah, did you have any other questions? All right. Yes, yeah, shoot us. Mm -hmm. Because the neck is so big, is just wrapping it going to get a good enough shape? No, you can't. When, when it comes to shapes, wrapping goes to like a degree and then you've got to start adding shapes to it so on the pony or the donkey you'll see I create a shape that goes on the bottom of the neck and a shape that goes on the top of the neck and then I wrap that with a piece of smooth four wool because wrapping is always going to kind of make a log 
and then you just have a log animal. So you've got to start sculpting with, with shapes to get the wool where it needs to be, for sure. So, yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. <laughs> Yep, yep, just the shapes, yep. Um, and then Sarah Sarah will send over that um, list and we'll post the list as well. So you'll have your... Yeah, I take my, my ragtag notes and I make them pretty. <laughs> and then we make a little PDF or picture of it and, and put it on Facebook. Mm hmm I'm just looking to see if there's any other questions. Yeah, she does. She does just two. She does two two wraps, so it's not so much a length as the shoulder is more like two wraps rather than an actual length on the shoulder wraps for the armature. Shoulder wraps. Oh. Um, yeah, you just want two wraps. Like, how do you keep the shoulders narrow? Oh, partly your armature. Mm -hmm. Like, don't let the armature get real broad. So when I made the armature, I actually kind of pinched the, pinch the shoulders together versus you can, you can have that out real broad. We don't want that. We want it, we want it pulled in. Mm -hmm. um, I love their long faces. <laughs> Has Vera made a donkey, a pony, mm -hmm. or a goat? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she'll be familiar with it. Yep. We're good? wait and see if there's any other questions that we need to catch alive. Right, right. Yeah, definitely <laughs> check out the goat. Uh, yep. So I don't, uh, a couple of things, just a couple of general Serafina things. And shop hop. Right now, I don't believe I have another shop hop scheduled. I do have an inbox with ideas. We had one kind of in the works that we couldn't, we couldn't coordinate, so I'll follow up with her but I will work on some more and feel free to send me your projects. You can email um, serafinafiberart at gmail.com to reach me. And um, I try to be good about letting you know that I got your email, even if I'm not ready to totally tackle the project yet. And um, uh, we already talked about the locks that are gonna be listed. Oh, we're working on a, a tree boodle, an autumn tree boodle. So that will be ready soon. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna go ahead and say it right now. We are trying to launch the Casa and Lock site on October 6th. So I've got two weeks to pull it together um, with a lot of help, of course. And I'm really looking forward to that. Um, what else? Big Fiber Fairy on the 27th mm -hmm. of October. We do um, still have 10% off today. We have 10% off today. And what's happening with koalas? There's going to be a felt along soon. Oh, next weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Uh -huh. The 30th. On the 30th? Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. We'll see you for the felt yep. along. Um, and... Yeah, I was like, why aren't I seeing any koalas? And then I realized we haven't done the felt so long yet. <laughs> so much going on. So that's that's all I've got. Um, yeah, Tony, there's going to be a drawing of the armature. It'll get put on Facebook later today. Once I re redo yes. it right. This <laughs> next Saturday is the koala. Yep. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Vera so much for joining us from so far away and um nice yeah join us if you can we'll we'll be seeing you soon for the felt along i hope you guys will be 
um, tuned in for the koala felt along. That's going to be a good time. They're a lot of fun and they're not too complicated. So, well, their little hands are a little complicated, but other than that, the shapes are pretty, shapes and colors are pretty straightforward. So thank you for chiming in today and um, we hope you can take advantage of 10% off today. If you need anything, otherwise um, some good things coming up down the road. So thanks so much.